What's the worry, y'all? Um, excuse my voice and my face. I just woke up. Um, and yesterday, believe it or not, I did not watch any basketball. Okay, that's Cap, because I went to Bulls versus Cavs. They invited me to their social media night. They put us up in the suite. I got to dance with Benny the Bull and talk with Benny. I talk with Benny the Bull. He didn't talk back. He's the real one. He saw my pregnant fiance. He gave us this little, hold on, let me show you. He gave us this. The real is, you know, we uh, we raising kids around here to be Bulls fans, so that's a W. So because I live so far away from the, the uh, United Center, it took us a while to get there, and it took us a while to get home. And when I got home, it was basically starting overtime of Denver versus Clippers. So I did watch that because, come on, man, how, how do you expect us, me to see an overtime game on and not tune in? So I watched a little bit of that. But I miss pretty much every other game in the association. And the question I get a lot is, Kenny, how do you keep up with every team in the NBA? How do you watch every game that's going on on a night that's 10 plus games? The answer is that I, I don't. I try to pick and choose which games I want to pay close attention to. When I see a game is close, even if I haven't been watching it for the three and a half quarters, I'll tune in then to see what's going on. But today is like a research day, right? I don't have time to watch every single minute of these games. So let me show you how I catch up with the association if there is a night where I miss everything. Is this video like a good one i don't really know it just came to my mind so i'm gonna see if y'all enjoy it be sure to leave a like if you do so here's where i always start you gotta know the scores of the day right so there are some storylines that i 100 know i know that joel and b dropped 50 yesterday because even when i was at the bulls game uh for pre-game warm-ups i saw that he had 20 points in the first quarter and somebody else had two so I knew he was about to go crazy and ended up with 50. We got to watch every moment of Joel Embiid's minutes, and I see that him and Mobamba had a little duel. I'm 100% going back to watch that. That's one thing I do. So that's one thing I do. If I see something like this where Mobamba and Joel Embiid had a center duel, instead of me watching this entire 48 minutes of this game, I'll watch the minutes where Joel has the ball or watch the minutes where Mobamba has the ball. So you can actually do this yourself. You got to click on the game. Do you go down to the play-by-play, -play, and they record every single second of the game, right? So this is a game when Joel and B had 50. I put my finder, I put in bead, and it'll just show you every time Joel and B did anything. He he uh he won the tip. He missed a shot in the first couple seconds. He had a bad pass turnover. And then you see all of these bold moments are him scoring. So I'll just double uh, right click and open in a new tab, and I will watch every possession, his makes, his misses, and just kind of get a feel for the game. That's that's one way I do it. And I'll do the same thing for Mobamba. It's, he had seven threes. Was he wide open all game? Kind of. Yeah, <laughs> kind of open all game. So then I make a checklist of things that we have to watch. Joel and B, Mo Bamba duel, check. Next, we have Kyrie Irving scoring 30 points in a one-point game against the Wizards. I mean, it's Kyrie's best game back. We're watching every single moment of Kyrie as well. Add that to the list. Now, one thing this method doesn't account for is like the ins and outs of the game, comebacks, all of that. And this is where I look to this tab, right? You got to go quarterback quarter. It seems like the Minnesota Timberwolves started off super hot and the Atlanta defense kind of picked it up in that third quarter while they got super hot and Trey Young must have did his thing. Biggest lead, 16 and 19. So this is a game of runs. I mean, if you're a reader, I mean, NBA.com has everything. People write up, tell you exactly what happened in this game. The loss of Edwards. Anthony Edwards got ejected with two technical fouls. We got to go watch him get uh, teed up. Was it worth it? Was it not? So there's just so many ways you can keep up with the association without watching the whole 48. Again, this is not like a replacement for watching the games. Obviously, watching the entire game is way more valuable. But when you're stressed for time and you're trying to keep up with the league, this is what I do. Now, I did get a notification on Twitter about Jimmy Butler getting ejected out of this game very early on. And the Heat still ended up winning. Anthony Simons had a good game, but again, Kayla Martin, I would guess Max Struess had a game. 15 points for Max Struess, but Kayla Martin off the bench at 32 minutes. Duncan Robson got the start today. That's very interesting seeing him back in the lineup. But Jimmy only played 15 minutes. Bam had 20 and 11. We got to watch Bam minutes because he also had five steals and three blocks. Add Bam minutes to the uh, to the list. Watch all the Bulls games. Shout out to Ayo DeSumo, just the greatest basketball player of all time. Um, he cr he climbed up the rookie ladder. He was at number 10. He better be at number 9 at the last night's performance. I ain't see that man make one mistake this season. I know he's got some turnovers, but I mean like one mistake this season. Every time he caught the ball against the Cavs, he either shot it wide open in the corner or he drove baseline and found a cutter. He was amazing, and his defense was on point as well. Next, the John Moran versus Giannis game is one that I 100% wanted to watch, but obviously, again, priorities, right? Um... Because on national TV, Stephen A. Smith was talking about, ah, uh, if we were having a playoff series, I might take Ja over Giannis, which is like, I love me some Ja Morant. Like, I picked him to win most improved play before the season started. I knew that he was about to hit superstardom, right? I knew that that was happening this season. But still, it just seems like so much... The, the Giannis just doesn't get enough credit still. Even though he has two MVPs, 
even though he might win a third one this year he's been a defensive player of the year he dropped 50 in the closeout game of the finals and people on tv are still saying nah i'm taking year three of job not saying that job won't eventually end up on this top tier top pedestal but it's like i can show love to john morant without comparing him to a dude that's already done so much or even discrediting a dude whose resume is ridiculous at the age of 27 28 and again it's kind of weird how the media does these type of things and based on this they both have really really good games you know so i'm excited to watch i don't know if i'm watching every um just the minutes of these two this seems like a game i might want to watch every every minute of you know just because it is two of the top teams in the league Giannis has an MVP performance. Ja looks like he had an MVP performance. I have, I think I'm watching every single minute of this game today. Yep, I'm gonna do it. Fast forward through the free throws and the timeouts and stuff. It ain't even that long, low key. I did see that Luca had a 40 piece against the Toronto Raptors. Very interesting there. Um, actually, a really close game. And we're gonna go to part two in a, in a quick second to show you another way that can help with this process. But I will look at Luca. Um, DeJounte Murray with a triple double with 23, 10, and 14 against OKC. The Jazz, like, when I tell you, when I thought about this idea, I didn't look at scores, I didn't look at nothing. Like, I wanted to come in here cold turkey to give you genuine genuine reactions, and the Jazz lost to the Rockets. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Donovan Mitchell didn't play last night, because he's in uh, concussion protocol. No, he didn't, but they still lost to one of the worst teams in the league. Um, Garrison Matthews is back, okay. Kevin Porter Jr. looked like he had a good game. Christian Wood with a 13-15 game. All right, we want to see what happened in this Jazz game. Even though you're missing your star's player, um, it's the Rockets. No disrespect, it's the Rockets. So I got to see how they ended up losing that. I told you I watched the end of this game, but still seeing Jokic have a 49-point game and a triple-double, including the assist that won the game, is incredible. The Kings with a letdown loss. Terrence Davis off the bench, 35. Sadiq with a 37 and three. And according to my play-by-play, -play, uh, the Kings were up 131 to 122 with two minutes and 30 seconds to go. And they blew it. <laughs> they blew it. So if I don't watch this whole game, I'm definitely watching these last two minutes because look at all these bold. Sadiq Bey hit a three. Kelly Olenek hit a three. Sadiq Bey got a layup. That's a one point game in a span of one minute, 30 seconds. That was quick. Sadiq Bey gets a free throw. I guess it was an and one layup. Um, Corey Joe hits a jump shot. They get a steal and that's the game. Dog, they didn't score one point. Um, oh, oh, they scored this free throw. And then for two minutes and 10 seconds, the Kings couldn't get a basket. Wow, that's insane. Okay, we watching those last two minutes for sure. And I did see that the Lakers lost. Um, the Twitter spaces put me in on that one. And Frank Vogel is on the hot seat, question mark. I think he has some comments that we put the best players out there to win. And Russell Westbrook wasn't out there. I don't know. Turmoil within the Lakers organization. They are back below 500 after a little streak where they were looking kind of decent. Okay, so method number two I was going to show y'all was going on to Reddit. And, um... <laughs> For, forbidden i i don't know what that is about no longer forbidden ladies and gentlemen we are here on r slash nba um if anything this will give me like the highlights from the day um like i already knew about the Jokic triple double but i haven't actually watched the highlights of joel and just yet but this one has nine thousand upvotes i'm gonna watch it right now adam silver if you're watching this video my apologies please don't take our video down cool so joel and b sizing up robin lopez step back three and that's for 49 points or 47 points right there. The center, size up, step back three. I'm telling y'all, bro, we so blessed to see all these great centers in the league right now. Ties a career high in 27 minutes of play. That's gotta be some type of record. 50 points in 27 minutes. Post game things are pretty interesting, but kind of toxic at the end of the day, but it can be fun. The Lakers lost the game, right? The Lakers lost the game against the Pacers. This is the post game show. This is how their post game show opened up at, right after that game. That man James Worthy is going through it. A guy that's been there for some championships. He know what winning is about. And he see how this Lakers team is going, bro. He's down. Bad. Hey, shout out to James, bro. Shout out to James. <laughs> Joel's 50 point in 27 minutes is the eighth most points per minute scored in an NBA game all time. Will Chamberlain score 2.8 or 2.08 points? Per I, I don't understand any of this, the, these these numbers and jargon. I, that's not how my brain works. Oh, this is his 100-point game for sure. Klay Thompson's 60-point game in 29 minutes. Makes sense. 
and then Joel Embiid 50 minutes or 50 points and 27 minutes is down there. But you got Kobe, you got George Gervin, Klay Thompson on here twice, which is wild. Um, one of these games I know very well. I I, don't, I won't explain why. But Kobe up here twice. But Klay Thompson being in this elite class is crazy considering the bro. Bro don't even dribble the ball. <laughs> bro don't even dribble the ball. He be putting up uh, 52 or 60 points in just 20 or less than 30 minutes. So I guess that a ref blocked the ball or a, a coach blocked the ball the other day. And the refs didn't catch it. And this is fourth quarter. Hold on. I got to get a better angle because this is not showing me much. So better angle here. It hits off an assistant coach and goes into the hands of Edwards. And Kuzma's trying to point it out. And it's five minutes left in the game. Wow. Oh, yeah. And I also woke up this morning to this news. Um, so that's that wasn't the greatest way to wake up. But, hey, it is what it is. One last thing I want to do um, is I don't want to pick on anybody. But I'm going to go to King, the King subreddit. I was going to make an entire video about the, like this. And please let me know if you're, you're down for this. Where... I go to the post game thread of a losing team and just react to the comments because for me it is so hilarious because sometimes you see some really wild takes after a loss. For example, um, after the Bulls beat the Cavs yesterday, I went to their post game thread and Jared Allen did not have a good game. Jared Allen is an all star caliber player. He did not have a good game against the Bulls last night and I saw some people in there. It's a small, it's a minority, right? Um, just talking about how bad he is or or how insufferable he can be to watch. When in reality, he's had one bad game in like, I don't know, 30. Um, but a game like this, we saw that they had a lead with two minutes to go and they blew it. So let's go look and see some of the stuff that was said in here. Just horrible. I don't know what else to say. We need a big. Also some mediums. And a smaller two for good measure. <laughs> Agreed. Big, big. I, li I like that comment. Yeah. We are three years into our development losing to teams that are actively taking. Three, we're a month away from year five of the boogie bottle buddy trade fox and buddy in their fifth season together here closer to three years oh uh, yeah um uh, no comments can we just trade people already for sure that's what i've been saying i don't care who get traded for what as long as it's not the bulls i need to see some trades how do you have a game like this and think to yourself we ain't making trades right now on the month like i would have made trades tonight Whoa, 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 whoa. This is why I draw the line. No Tamezi Metu slender. No Tamezi Metu slender around here. I'm, I'm out of here. The Jazz will have lost to six of seven teams with the worst record in the league after this one. And no signature win over top tier records. The Jazz. Mm -mm -mm. Being a Jazz fan is torture right now. Something needs to change. That's very interesting, man. Because I think a lot of people see that the Jazz are towards the top of the conference and just be like, oh, they cool. You know what I'm saying? Everything is going swell. Apparently, Jazz fans feel otherwise. Um something needs to change again a loss to the utah jazz i mean loss to the houston rocks is a bad one regardless of whether or not donovan mitchell was there and i didn't know this is a stat that i didn't know six of the seven worst teams in the league they've lost to this year and they haven't had a signature win which is wild for a team that's still what third fourth in the conference right now and this was my question what moves and somebody said ingles plus a pick for an athletic wing i forgot danny ainge was even a part of this like front office right now he might even trade for tristan Thompson. oh that was a meme okay great <laughs> this team was less painful when we're rebuilding you know the funny thing about this statement on, on paper it may sound crazy that's 100 true when you're a rebuilding team you're not you have no expectations for what's going on so like when the bulls were bad for the last five years i would watch every bulls game but I didn't expect to win anything. So even when we did lose by 20 or even lose by two, I walked away feeling like, hmm, what can I take away? This young player had a good game. This young player have a good game. And now when your team is good or supposed to be winning games, the losses like this, it takes so much away from you as a fan. You know what I'm saying? You lose to the Houston Rockets. We lost to the Houston Rockets. They had one loss on the season at that point. You know what I'm saying? You know how down bad I was? So I understand what um, Mr. Cote5 is saying. The Jazz are still frauds. It's one of the most upvoted things here. Just wait till Clay comes back. Don't forget about Jamal Murray and Kitchen. Reddit can be a funny place every once in a while. Um, again, more times than not, it's uh, just toxic. So that's how I catch up on games that I've missed. Let me know if this method is going to help you. If you enjoyed watching this, let me know. If you want to see that video where we uh, read toxic comments from fans, let me know as well, man. I'm, I'm very excited or, or curious about um, whether or not y'all think that it's a good idea. Um, hopefully I'll see y'all tomorrow. I don't know. Some of y'all weren't expecting the video because we were supposed to have a trip to San Francisco. Something came up. The trip got pushed back. And the game that we were going to go to 
was um, Warriors versus Rockets on the back-to-back. -back. So there was a world where Clay didn't play, Draymond is still out. So we were like, ah. But now the next game that we might go to is Warriors versus Nets at, at, at San Fran. So that means we can see Kyrie, see James, and it's not on the back-to-back, -back, so Clay should be playing. Yeah, it should be a good game. Um, So, yeah, we might be there.